this global GEG broadcast. We'll be making a start shortly. And while we're waiting for everyone to arrive, why not head into the chat, let us know who you are, where you're from, your Twitter handle, and if you've got any questions that you'd like us to answer during the course of this evening, let us know there as well. Also, if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button to make sure you stay up to date with all of the events being organised by us at Global GEG. We'll be making a start really soon. Thanks for joining us. Yay! We want to welcome everybody to our Getting Started with Canvas episode today. We have two amazing educators from Tennessee. Um, and uh, to start us off, um, my name is Stacy Klein. I'm a teacher in Santa Ana Unified. We are a Canvas LMS, and I get the lucky position of being a Canvas coach and a, and a Canvas admin to help out our teachers. And we're super excited to continue our blended learning in our district with Canvas. So excited about uh, the session today because many of us are newbies. And my um, compatriot here in the StreamYard broadcast studio is the amazing Dana Cooney. She's the uh, GEG leader from Nevada, and she's going to talk about her upcoming launch. <laughs> Hey everyone, uh, I'm Dana Cooney. I am from Clark County School District in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, we are the fifth largest school district in the country and we're going Canvas this year. So it's gonna be amazing. I'm so excited to do learning. I've never taught with Canvas before, but I promise I'm gonna be an expert by the end of this hour. <laughs> Yay! And so without further ado, we're introducing uh, Lance Key and Adam West. Um, they are, um, like as I said before, with the Google Educator Group in Tennessee and the Vital Virtual School um, in the Putnam County School System. And um, we're just all super excited to learn some more about how to get started with Canvas. All right, guys. Thanks for having us on the show tonight. Uh, first off, we do want to stress this is a getting started with Canvas. Uh, so we're going to take you in the ins and outs of the things to get you started. Now, this is a little bit of a series that we're going to try to run for you guys. So questions that you have tonight, if we don't get to them, because I'm sure there's a lot of questions that's going to come in. We're going to go back and review those questions to help us get ready for next week. Uh, but we will try to get into a couple of things for tonight. I think they are posting the link to the session there, which is bit.ly forward slash GSW dash canvas. So before we get started tonight, I am Lance Key. Uh, I am a Google Certified Innovator, but I am the Instructional Technology Specialist in Putnam County Schools, Tennessee. Uh, and uh, I've got a few other things that are here on the, uh, the screen, but I've been a, a Canvas administrator for, I guess, about four years now. My name is Adam West. I am also with Putnam County Vital. I am a rem new title this year, Remote Learning Specialist, but also a Canvas admin. Been in charge of Canvas course creation and, and just management over the last four years as well. Yeah, and we, Adam and I have both done a little bit of everything in Canvas. We've built courses. We have taught courses out of it. We have uh, coached other teachers up on how to build and teach courses. Uh, and we're on the admin side. So the LTIs, the APIs, the QTIs, all of those I's, we've been in there. So a couple of commercial breaks for us right quick. We host the largest Google conference, sole Google conference in Tennessee. Well, this year we're having to take it virtual. Uh, and a lot of our people from GEG Tennessee and GEG uh, Global or Global GEG is going to be joining us and will be presenting for us. So you can click on vitalgoogle.com. There's a form there so you can sign up for us. We have some excellent presenters that's coming for free because they can't travel to other conferences. There's also some other publications about our vital school that's there for you guys to check out. Also, uh, I host a podcast with the famous Miss Stephanie Howe, uh, and I'm surprised she hasn't popped in here yet on us, but uh, this is just a, a podcast that we have with innovators and trainers that come on and talk about all the cool things that's going on in education. All right, so our agenda tonight, first off, we're gonna talk about why Canvas. Okay, I know a lot of us are comfortable in Google Classroom, uh, and we want to say there, and I'm in a Google innovator and I use Google Classroom in the past, but let's talk about why Canvas. And second, what is Canvas? Third, how to use Canvas. And then last, we're going to get into some Q&A at the end. So Adam, take it away. Why are we going to be using Canvas this year? Give us the pros and cons of uh, Google Classroom and Canvas. So a little Jimmy Fallon here for us, pros and cons. Well, before I get started there, let me uh, let we have a question already that I wanted to go ahead and answer early. Someone is asking, is there a way to track student uh, 
activity within Canvas. And so I want to, if we can screen share real quick my screen, I want to show you uh, a typical student as we are seeing here on my screen. And you can see their activity. This is found under people if you have a roster in a class. And you can see their total activity time. And if you, of course, go to the sub menu and you can see the analytics and it breaks it down to an even um, greater scale where you can see activity by day. And so I hope that answers the question that someone was asking earlier. Not something that's easily one of the cons as we're talking into the pros and cons. Hey, Adam, go ahead, and, go ahead and scroll down there and show them the page views while you're there. Isn't that on that yeah. screen there too? Yeah, you can go all the way down. That's what we've got on that screen on your side. As you, but this this would fall under one of our cons. So let me go back to our slide for just a second as we're talking about the the actual cons so of this back. course. Yeah, and, and so as you know, and most of us that uh, the cons of Google Classroom. Sorry, as we deal with Google Classroom, and you see the the limitations as far as monitoring goes, and this is one of our conversations that we've had in our county, but. The pros, and I'm not anti Google Classroom because I've used it, still still use it as a tool within my uh, a lot of different activities and groups that I have. And so obviously the pros, we got free, it's easy to use. Teachers are familiar with it. Most of us have been to trainings that uh, Google Classroom, and you know Google was one of the first ones to get on board of the educational process and what we needed. And they've really been done a great job as far as getting things uh, for us uh, tools wise and and bringing things from beta to to where we can actually use it. And of course, uh, all the things that we can use with our Google Docs that blends into our Google Classroom, it allows for teacher creativity, flexibility, all the things that we see there on the pros. If we look over on the con side, we, uh, and this is one of our limitations as administrators, is we, have not, we don't have a lot of oversight. There's no way to kind of monitor student progress and student access and to see how, are they logging in on time? Are they putting enough time in? And, and so obviously as we go into remote learning for a lot of us in, out there in this virtual world, this is something that's going to be on your plate to think about. And uh, can't easily replicate classes. Canvas has a great tool for that. Manually roster students. Uh, there's a way that they can obviously sign up for the classes. No standards track and no attendance, no reports. Can't ma mass load vendor content. Can't easily rearrange and can't unpublish content. Once it's out there, it's out there. And of course, you know the organizational method as things flow, it's almost like a Facebook stream that it publishes you know, vertically as it goes in. And so things kind of get stacked on top of each other. And so that kind of is a limitation as well. But let's go to good, our Canvas. If we talk about the pros of Canvas, and I really, uh, you know, we've, we've been fortunate enough to be in multiple LMSs since my teaching career, my administration career as far as uh, vital goes. And so Canvas has kind of been, we've been with them for a day or two, and we've kind of really had a chance to see them grow and see some of the adjustments that they've made. And if you look at the, the pros, it integrates with almost, with LTIs, integrates with almost anything that we try to, to do. And obviously grade pass back. I don't, some of you probably haven't heard that term yet, but that'll be something we'll cover down the road and replicate courses. Uh, it has a new tool that we like and we're really fond of called blueprinting, especially for using multiple sections of the same course content. Now that course content can be locked or it can be manipulated uh, easily if you allow your teacher of that course to, to do so. And of course you can have a common pace across uh, a curriculum and uh, build di district curriculum. You can have your uh, shells and then of course you can load your content in there. Uh, administrative reports. There's a lot of things that we can pull from that. And then you can do audio, video. There's there's speed grader options where you can write on the, the uh, I don't even, we didn't put that down as a pro, but speed grading is really a great tool where we can easily manipulate content and comments for these students. And we can even do video and audio comments. If you look over on the right, and, and I guess I need to leave that last one there, that quiz banking and modification, that is a really nice feature to be able to have quizzes built and then to pull those for questions later on if you decide to use the same content or the same quiz questions for a summative type assessment. And if you look over on the con side, it, it, it is, <laughs> there's a learning curve. I, I don't think that anybody that's been in there would, would doubt that. 
Uh, it is like everything that I have found that if you prepare at the beginning, it makes life a little easier in the long run. And, and that goes with any of our learning management stuff. Uh, it does require in service. I'll have to agree with that. And, and uh, as far as Lance has a, a uh, will require a heavy lift on our vital team. Uh, he, he knows what it means with our new remote learning and what it's, what it's doing and what it's doing to everybody out here. So uh, it's something that the blueprinting thing will be something you will really want to kind of weigh heavily on in yourself. And, um, and, and, and of course, as you know, it may only benefit the students who are actually forced into that. And sometimes we don't always have content built for uh, every grade level. So that kind of would be a limitation, I think, but it also a pro because you can build it. Go ahead, Lance, take it away. Yeah, so, so a couple of things that we looked at too is number one, equity. Equity and access to content. This is the two, the two big things that it's been for us. Uh, we wanna make sure that students have the same access and equity of uh, teaching and access to content uh, across our district. So uh, using Canvas, uh, we can create that district curriculum and then we can push it down into shells uh, so that every student gets to see the same thing. Uh, now again, as Adam was saying, is a heavy lift on us, but in my opinion, it is worth it. So next, what is Canvas? What is Canvas? Well, when I think about Canvas, I think about this guy here. Uh, of course, it's uh, an exaggerated Swiss army knife. Uh, it's big, it's a little bulky, but it's got every tool known to man in it. So we can, we can pull anything out of it that we need. But what I like to think about is it's like a large tool belt. So I remember my dad as a kid, he always wore a tool belt. And now that I've got older, I understand why. And Adam, he's been doing a lot of building around his house, but I feel like that I have to go here and get a hammer. I go here and get, a, get some screws. You know, my dad had everything right there on his tool belt that he needed and he was ready to go. So Adam, with all your sanding and all that stuff you've been woodworking, you've been doing lately, you've been wearing a tool belt? or, or uh, uh, Tool belt is a lifesaver when you're having to run back and forth to pull tools from a shed, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I, I feel like this is the same thing for our, for our teachers. Uh, I went to uh, Australia last year and, and was over there, and, and I felt like I was at the Google Innovator Academy over there, and Google has become a way of life for me. But I kind of feel like that Google and Canvas now kind of embraced each other and they're working together. So when I was, when I started working in Canvas, it made me think of while I was in Australia because my plugs didn't work while I was there. I had to buy adapters. I had to buy things to go with it. So all of these tools that you see around the side, there are things we use in the classroom, but we've got to find a way to piece those all together. So Canvas for me is kind of like that plug adapter that I had to take with me while I was over in Australia so that I could plug all those pieces in together. So as we were talking about earlier, QTIs, LTIs, uh, all those I's, one raw string, you know, everything, common cartridges, our files coming in. Canvas allows us to bring all those pieces and plug it into one place for our kids and for our district. So now we're gonna jump into what you guys probably come to hear tonight was how to use Canvas. And again, this is going to be a getting started session. We will hit higher level questions and, and harder things in our next session, but we're gonna start off with getting started. One thing that I'll tell you is the slides are for you. This is gonna be a live demo tonight. Adam and I are gonna jump out into Canvas now, but just to give you the layout of the land and how it's gonna work, uh, the slides are for you and we've got videos that are gonna be in there. Okay, we've got a screen. Adam, they got your screen sharing right now. For some reason, if we can go back to my screen, please. Thank you. All right, so the first thing that you need to know is how to log into Canvas. All right, now, this can be very, very confusing for teachers and students. If you Google Canvas, you will get a link and it will look a lot like your Canvas environment. So canvas.instructure.com is a free Canvas that you can get for just your classroom. There's some limitations and things on it, but you can log in with Canvas there. But for the most of us that are here tonight, you're gonna to go to whatever your institution name is in the beginning, .instructure.com. For me, it's pcsstn.instructure.com, Putnam County School System, Tennessee. Okay, for, for Adam, he works on our vital side, so it is vital.instructure.com. Now, one, one way that you can kind of tell that you're there and you're in the right place is it should have some of your branding on here. If you see the gray page and you kind of see a gray or a red canvas logo up here in the top, you're probably at the wrong place. And my students, most of the time, they send me a message, hey, my classes aren't loaded. 
Well, guess what? They went and, and it will allow them to log in, but their classes weren't loaded because they're in the wrong place. So as I said, Adams is vital.instructure.com. Comes in here. So when, when I go over to it, you notice it's got the vital branding on it. These are both canvas instances, but you will see they look different inside of there. Okay, so the first thing is logging into Canvas, your institute, whatever that is, .instructure.com should be it. It's possible that it could possibly be something else, but for the most part, that's what I'm going to go with. All right, so let's get some common language going tonight. First off, this is your dashboard. You saw all of my cards and my things sitting there. I call these guys cards here in the middle. On the left side here, this bar is what we're going to call global navigation. Global because it's like global GEG. It's everywhere. Okay. All right. So that is global. Second one is these are your favorite courses. And we're going to talk about what the different sentence is between your courses and your favorite courses in there. Okay. So these are your favorite courses. And over here to the right, this is your to do list, probably what you need to grade as a teacher. And you can simply click on that and it will take you into what you need to grade. Next, your course navigation. So once you're inside of a course, you have this navigation over here, which we will call your course navigation. So this over here is global navigation. This is course navigation. If you ever lose your course navigation, these three lines that you see right here, you can click that and it will bring your course navigation back up. In your grade book, you do lose your course navigation. You don't have to go out to get back to it. A lot of people do that. You can click right here on the three lines and you can get right back to it. The last thing that I'll talk to you about, and then I'm gonna throw it back to Adam. And like I said, we've got videos that go along with each one of these things. The slides are for you guys. We're fixing to jump out of this. But this is the new rich content editor. When you open up a page or you open up an assignment, the box that you get to put your stuff in, if it does not look like this, which somebody's instance did to the other day, I'm not throwing any, or not uh, casting any stones there, but, you can turn this on or you can have your district turn on the rich content editor, which you do want because then you can drag and drop pictures straight into this box. That has been a pain point for Canvas for a long time is with the old one, you had to upload a file or you had a link to the web address of it. Now you can take your Bitmojis because everybody loves their Bitmojis and drag and drop your Bitmoji right into the content editor. And we're gonna do that a little later tonight. All right, so I'm gonna throw this over to Adam now. Uh, we're going to take you through the getting started, the 10 steps to get started with Canvas. I'm not going to lie, uh, I stole most of this from some from other people's. In the slides, as you go through them, there is a video. Some of them are from Canvas. Some of them are the ones we created that will walk you through every one of these steps tonight. So far, first off, we're going to talk about, actually, I'm doing the first two. My bad. First off, we're going to talk about modifying your Canvas settings. And then the second one, and I'm going to do these together because they're in the same place, is customizing your notifications. So the first thing you want to do is get inside your Canvas environment. All right. I'm inside the Canvas environment. The first place we're going to go is in the global navigations over here on the left and click accounts. And then this is going to pop this bar out here and you see notifications here. You see profile settings, all these things. We're going to click on settings right here. So accounts and then settings. In global navigations and then from here we want to change a few things so first off I may want to change my icon you'll see my little coin icon that one of my students screw me there if I wanted to change that I would hover over it there's a pencil I click that guy I can upload a photo I can take a photo I don't know what this guy is but sure if that's what you want to do go for it but upload a photo take a photo right there after you get finished you can hit save and then it will upload for you so let's give you guys a second to do that. I don't think it's going to allow me to take a picture. Oh, there's my wires from my other camera, but I guess I could take a picture of that and now use that as my photo. Oh, it's not recognizing me, so it's going to let me do that or upload a photo of myself. Okay, once you get finished with that, hit save and you have changed that. The next thing on this page over to the right, there is edit settings. I'm going to click on this guy. Now, one thing that I will tell you is if your district manages your Canvas course from a SIS, a school information system like Infinite Canvas, PowerSchool, things like that, 
It will not allow you to change your names because it has to match whatever's in your SIS. If they do not, you can come in here and you can edit your name. So if your name is uh, changed or you don't want your display name to be seen as Lance Key, maybe Coach Key or something like that, you can change that right there. You can change your language settings. You can change your time zone. And this is the place you also change your password. So if I want to change my password, I can do that there. Now, if you're doing a single sign-on like we do with Google, it's not going to do anything for you. I'm going to hit update settings there. And all my settings that I changed will come right there. Next, sometimes your Google services will get messed up. As you see right here, I'm not going to actually do this. But this is where you come and you click the X right here and it will take out your Google services. Don't worry, it's gonna throw it right here into other services and you just click it and add it back. But sometimes it, it just gets stuffed up a little bit and you have to go in there and fix it. And then last, here's all the QTIs and LTIs that you've got going on. I generally don't change any of those uh, because these are like some of the, the tools, external tools that we'll talk about next time that we've got running in here. And then at the bottom, if you have any featured options that you need, like high contrast, if you need high contrast, you can turn it on right here. Okay. If you need any of these other things, if there's anything you just like there, you can turn it on. All right. Uh, in the top right up here, you can add another email address. So if there's another email address that you want to get email from or other contacts. So if you want to add a cell phone number here, you can come in here and you can add a cell phone number so that you receive text and things like that. This is important. So I'm going to, uh, I'm actually not going to put my cell phone number here. That would not be smart right now. But I could put my cell phone number there. And what would happen is when we go to notifications in a second, I could then change those settings and notifications. So they, I'll get those the way that I want them. So if I click on notifications right here, this can be, I'm not going to spend much time here. You guys need to come back to this though, because this can be overwhelming. Okay. It will come in default, whatever Canvas said, but notification preferences. The check mark, which is this guy right here, notify me right away. Okay, now you don't want to be notified right away every time a kid turns something in because you're going to be getting emails all the time. Send me a daily summary. You want to get an email once a day about all these things. Send me a weekly summary or do not send me anything. Okay, so you can see the ones that I've got to email me right away is grading. Okay invitations, things like that. Somebody invites me to a course, I'll get that notification right away. Uh, added to conversations right away. But you need to go through this and set your settings so that it's exactly like you want it, so that you're getting the information that you want. Okay. All right. I'm going to throw it over to Adam right quick. And All right. he is going to take us now through accessing a Canvas course. Uh, let me show you a couple things. Uh, are we on my, I guess we're on my screen now. As you look at it, and of course, you probably have seen this, but it will be very important in your future, especially if you start using tools that within the course, that once you get into your dashboard, let me go back to this, and you click on an actual course, as you bring that course up, it will be important to remember course numbers. We use that very regularly to try to get in that. And of course, if a course is not published, then that course isn't visible anyway to the students. And for that, I'm going to go, oh, let's go mess it up. So make sure that, and Lance, I, I guess I need to go over this. As you go into your courses and you go to all courses, just a little bit of this, you can see courses that you've been enrolled in. And of course, you can see starred courses that are current. Now, past enrollments, will not, if they're not in the current term, will not show if you start. But if you start that course, it will show up in your dashboard like that. And you can kind of change it there. And of course, that's the course settings there. Well, let's see. What do we got next, Lance? We've got create a homepage. Is that no, me or you? No, that's me. I think you skipped one there, maybe. Uh, updating your syllabus, upload a syllabus, your syllabus. All right. So, well, let's, let's deal with the homepage. All right. So this is something new. All right. Since I'm still on here, <laughs> as you deal with a, uh, creating a homepage and most of you probably know this, but under the pages tab, 
and I kind of created that Bitmoji page last night to kind of play around with me and Lance. We were looking around. Uh, that may be for another <laughs> another Canvas session, but uh, definitely something I think worth doing. But as you look at your pages, you go into pages and view all pages. Of course, I will have several here, but you can create a page. And once you create that page, it, it, you can type whatever you want to with a rich content editor. Or if you want to do an HTML copy and paste, you can do that as well. Insert pictures, all the normal tabs here. But once you are finished, I'm going to hit cancel for just a second because I don't need a page. But once you are finished, you can actually use as your front page is in the sequence here. So you can change a lot of different things of what the kids see when they first come in in the settings. But that's one way to choose and another way to choose your home page. You can decide if it's something other than a page. You can use a syllabus, assignments list, course modules or the activity stream of what's currently due as the kids log in. All right, so I'm going to go into. And if I'm forgetting anything, jump in there and make sure I don't yeah, uh, skip yeah. over something. Yeah, I'm going to jump right back in there and talk about syllabuses for a second. All right, so uh, go back to my syllabus. Screen. Yeah. All right, so the next thing we want to cover. I got you. Get there. I got is you. Lance's is my course. If we go to syllabus on our links as we are dealing with it. Can you okay. hear me, Lance? Yeah, yeah, I got it. All right, so on our syllabuses here, what we've got is our due dates uh, will come in for all of our classes. So we go to our course navigation over here on the left, and I click on syllabus, and any assignment or anything that you've got in there, you'll see my due dates. This is from my course from last year. All my due dates are here. All the assignments are right there. But you know, our state, they actually, they require us to, to put a scope and sequence and a few things like that in there. So I may want to add a few other things to this. Uh, and, and in my district, we actually, we type it up in a Google Doc so that we can submit that. So that's, this is like our syllabus and our scope and sequence and everything for our course. So I may need that inside of Canvas on my syllabus page. So to do that, I'm going to hit edit right here. And then I get my rich content editor box here that I can type in. Now, it's important that you learn how to use this rich content editor box because you're going to see it everywhere and your students are going to see it everywhere. You're going to see it uh, on your assignments page, on your uh, content pages. You're going to see it in your syllabuses. You're going to see it in your um, discussion based assessments and every, or your discussions, everything. So across the top, you can see we've got our standard buttons, our bolds, our different uh, font sizes. Uh, our centers, our bullet points. But these three dots, depending on your screen size, you probably don't get to see everything. These three dots right here, when you click on it, it will give you a few more options. Uh, I'm going to go to this last one, which is the plug. Okay, so I'm going to hit the plug right here, which is the apps button. And we're going to talk more about these next week in the external tools. And then I'm going to scroll down to Google Apps. So if you're a Google Apps for Education District, you should have this turned on in your district. If you don't, Ask somebody please to turn it on because this will give you access to your Google Drive so that you can bring it in. Now, I have a lot of stuff in my Google Drive, so we'll see if this will load quickly. It looks like it is. So I took this name, this integrated three class, I copied it, I'm gonna paste it in here. That way it'll just search for it real quick. You can go through your folders if you want to, if you know what stuff is. Then I'm gonna highlight this guy and I'm gonna hit embed. And what you're gonna see is it's gonna embed that syllabus right into this box right there. So you see my logo, you can see the syllabus come in and you can hit upload syllabus. Now, if you want this thing to be a different size, bigger things like that, also in your rich content editor, this guy controls how much space you got. See how much I'm moving that up and down? That's just so you can view it though, okay? This guy right here is your raw HTML editor. So I click that guy and here is my HTML that comes in. I can change the width and I can change the height right there of that if I want to. And don't worry, if you want to go back to just the raw page, you click right here and your file will come back up in there. And when you're finished, you just hit update syllabus. And now your syllabus will be on that page. So I got a couple of gifts that I'm going to give you guys tonight for following along with us. I, and I'm probably fixing to lose every person that's on here. So don't just rush out and start doing this right now. 
But on the home page, on the home page, which I'm skipping assignments, we'll go back to it. Actually, let's create an assignment first because if I show you the home page first, you're not going to pay attention. I know how you, I know how you students are. I've got a bunch of you. So to create an assignment, I'm going to show you how to create a page and an assignment right quick. Um, and then after you learn how to do this, then we're going to learn how to start building everything from the module side. And, and Coach West is going to take us through that. So over on the website, this is our course navigation. We're looking for assignments. And don't worry, yours can be in a different place. We'll talk about how to arrange these different ways later. I'm going to cl click on assignments here. And then from assignments, I am going to click on the plus assignments, the big blue button at the top. As you can see, I can see every one of my assignments that are in here. Okay. So I'm going to click plus assignment right here. You've got two parts to an assignment. You've got the top part, okay, which is going to be the same almost as a page. You have to name it. So what is my assignment? This is just going to be test assignment. Okay. And then you've got your rich content editor. This is the place where you put in your documents, your instructions. This isn't your actual assessment that your students are going to turn in yet. But let's say that they need to read from a PDF first, okay, that you got in Google Drive. Or they need to look at a YouTube video or something like that. You can bring all of that in here. Or maybe you just need to type some directions, like watch the video and read the text. Then give me a summary in the content or in the contents box. Lance, we got a couple of questions. When we get done with this, I want to I want to take a moment to answer those about the homepage question. I see two or three there that uh, well, I think will be the same thing before you do your Bitmoji. Before homepage. I create my homepage, okay. Yeah. All right. So now that stuff is in Google Drive, or maybe it's not. I want to bring it in from somewhere. Uh, I can link it. I can pull images in if I want to put my Bitmoji in here just so that it's it's fun and, you know, kids want to, you know, I'm going to click on my genius guy right here, drag, drop him in, and then maybe I want to resize him. This is the rich, the new rich content editor. So if you don't have the new rich content editor enabled, you need to get your district to turn that on for you. All right. And then I want to center him up maybe. And let's center our text up. All right, and then under this now, let's go over here and click my plugins button. And I'm going to go to my Google Apps again. And I know that inside of my online courses, I have in my flip videos, I have a video that I want them to watch from chapter one. So I'm going here, one lesson one. I'm going to actually grab both of these at the same time. This is the video I want them to watch. This is the document that goes along with it. I can hit embed here, which will put both of these live on the page. Or I can hit link, and it'll be just links they click on, and it'll take them out. So I'm going to hit embed. And then you're going to see that it's going to flow in here from my Google Drive. Here is my video that they watch. Here is the work that goes along with it. So what I actually should have said here was watch the video and then do the problems. So what I need to do now, though, is provide them a way to turn this content into me. So if I scroll down, this bottom part is the things that determine all those things. How many points is it worth? Uh, how do they turn it in? All that. So I'm going to come in here and say, OK, this is worth 100 points because that's what most teachers do. Okay, what assignment group does it go into? Now, this is very important when you start getting into grade weighting later. And we'll look at the assignments tab here in a minute. So right now, I'm just going to throw it into imported assignments because I know where that's at. But, you know, you can create a new group right here if you want to. I'm just going to say imported assignments. How do you want the grade to be displayed? Do you want it as a percentage, as a points? I generally stay with points. Okay, and then how do you want them to submit it? This is probably the most important question that you're going to answer. Okay, if you say online, which is what this is defaulting to, how do you want it? Do you want a text entry? Okay, that gives them a box so they can type their answers in. Do you want a website URL? 
which can be important because maybe they've got it on a Google slide sheet or they got it in a Google draws or they made a screencaster by video, any of those things. And then they can turn it right into you. A media recording inside of Canvas. If you hit media recording here, they'll have the option to turn the camera on just like I've got right now, record themselves actually making the video and then hit the turn in button or a file upload. Maybe they wrote it all out on paper, took pictures with their phone, which that's what most of my kids do. And then they upload those files in for their answers. Okay. Now we've got other options that you can do. You can say no submission. Okay. Which no submission and on paper to me are pretty much the same thing. Uh, and then external tool we're not going to get into tonight. That will be for next week. Right now I'm just going to do online and I'm going to accept any of these. Scroll down, plagiarism checkers, something that we've got turned on in our district. So we won't talk about that. And the very last thing is, when is this assignment due and who's it, who is it assigned to? Now, if you have an LMS or an SIS that is tied to this, be careful assigning to different people. I can choose different groups here. So if I just want to come in here and assign this just to this one student, I can. Okay, or if I want to say everybody in a certain section, like this section in this class, only this section will get it. And I can set their due date available from and to, so they won't see it till this date, won't see it to that date. But I can hit add, and then I can come down here and say, okay, I want to assign this to my other section. And their due date is from this time to this time. Now, when we get to quizzes, and we start getting into, I don't want the students to see the quiz until a certain time you can actually start doing that from here so that they can only see visibility to that quiz at a certain time. All right, I'm gonna close that, that, and I'm gonna make this back to everyone. And at the bottom, you'll hit save or save and publish. If you hit save, they can't see it yet. If you hit save and publish, they can. We're gonna talk about how to publish assignment in a second. So I'm gonna hit save and publish. Oh, I didn't set a due date. And the reason that it's asking for one is because it's synced to my SIS, which my SIS says I have to, if I uncheck that, I can hit save and publish and now it will move on. You'll get the preview view from there. All right, Adam, take that question right quick before I go on to my pages. Yeah, let's great share my screen here for a moment. Somebody asked a couple of different questions. One of them was, when you first log in, do the students see the same homepage or they see different homepage? Well, they should see the learning management or the LMS of Canvas, depending upon what it is. Every Here's the way I've always taught this to my kids. The LMS is their school and these little, uh, place cards that you see on my screen are their are their classrooms and what is inside that classroom is the content the book the teacher the all the information required to do that but as you click on a class or you get into an actual course as a teacher you'll see of course this is the first page they see this is the home page of what shows up when they first come in the course if we choose and and Lance, I, I kind of went lost there for a little while ago, I guess. But uh, if you go to your pages and created a page that you wanted to use for your first, and sometimes you do that to kind of set the guidelines, to put some orientation, early stuff like that, or you can do a bit bitmoji such as this. But if you'll notice over here on the right, uh, somebody asked, I thought the syllabus was supposed to be our homepage. Well, it could. That's, there's nobody says that that's not the case, but when you click on choose homepage, when you first log in, you get all of these choices. And of course, you know, the course activity stream or the things that are active course modules, the page would be something that we choose from the pages menus. It could be multiple pages that we have choices for. And of course you could choose the course modules, which most of my students, we encourage them to direct their self to the modules because that's going to be their requirements as far as the syllabus go and the due dates. And the other thing, there's like three or four links. I always tell my guys they're going to go to the grades. Of course, they're going to look at their grades, uh, the modules. And uh, sometimes they'll go to the teacher because they want to get in touch with us a different way. And so we put all our content, our contact information there. And of course, assignments list and the syllabus, the assignments list will take us to where all the assignments are listed in a thing. The only problem with that as your homepage is a lot of times kids forget to do the content. They'll just say like, you know what, this is where I should start. And so I just get in there and I start working on assignments and we have a lot of issues with that. But what we like to do is to go to the front page, but the syllabus would be fine as well. And we direct them to a little orientation module that we can, you know, kind of build out and send out to our kids, depending upon what the course looks like.
Yep. So two things there, Adam. Number one, if you have not created a page yet, so if we haven't like we haven't created a page yet, that's not going to that's going to be grayed out for you. So we'll switch back over to, to my screen right quick and let's talk about how to make a page. And, and then I'm going to share some things with you uh, as a gift tonight for joining us. But right here, pages, I can click on this and it's going to bring up a page for me. OK, which is generally your home page. Uh, if you haven't created a page here, it'll let you just go in and create page. But in order to see all of your pages, you have to hit the view all pages button. I don't know why they do it that way, but hey, that's OK. It's their LMS. I'm just playing inside of it. Once you created a page like this says vital home page, these three dots right here, you click this guy and you actually hit use as front page. That's how it knows which one you want to use as the front page. OK, but that doesn't make it the front page because then you have to go to your uh, front page or your home screen and choose your front page. It just makes it so that you can make it that way. So let's talk about how to create a page. And then Adam's going to talk to you about all the symbols and things here in a minute and modules. But a page is a place just to hold content or make announcements or things like that. You do have an announcements tab, uh, but this is just a place to put information. There's nothing the students can turn in here. So I always like to say, all right, what kind of page do you want to make? An assignments page or a content page? Does the student see turn anything in to you? Is there any evidence that you want to see here? OK, if the answer is no, make a page because there's not a grade tied to it. It's just there for them to click on, look at, watch, take notes from any of that. But after they get finished with that on that, if you want them to actually turn something into you for you to grade, you need to make an assignment space. The great thing is they're actually the exact same thing, uh, except for uh, you don't have the extra settings at the bottom. You got name your page here. So I'm just going to call this uh, Coach Key information um let's build that it's hard to type time key information all right and then you can come in here and you can use your rich content editor okay you can choose to put uh videos in here you've got html code so anything you've got embed code here for you can maybe i want to go over here and i'm going to click on this and look for media okay so any media that i've got in my course files i can look i can add that in here any of that evidently i don't have anything in here i can click right here on my uh, plugins button i can go back out to my google apps any pictures or anything that i've got here i can do that so i can go in there or i can simply just come in here and upload a file so i'm gonna go in here upload an image and I'm going to upload it from my computer. So let's go to, here's my welcome button. I'm going to hit submit here. And then it's going to put my welcome image right here in the middle of the screen. And then I can come in here, type my text underneath it, whatever I want. And I can hit save and publish. And now this becomes a page. So again, you can bring tables in, you can bring images in, you can bring videos in, any of that. All right, now let's set this thing, use this front page. When I go to home, you will see this is now my front page from what it was before. All right, now what I've got for you tonight though is because I know that a lot of you are following the fads in education right now and everybody wants their own digital classroom because they're just neat and fancy. Uh, and I fixed Adams up for him last night after he went to bed. He goes to bed early. Uh, if you notice on mine, it said working late. That's, that's the truth. All right, so what I've got here for you is this is, I've actually got three front pages. I haven't decided which one that I want yet. These are clickable links, modules, grades, and assignments that will take you to those things inside my class. So everybody knows that I have to have my Starbucks coffee. So there it is. All right, the second one I got for you here is my Evil Genius Lab. Okay, again, modules, grades, announcements there. And then the last one, is my comic book one, okay? Modules, grades, announcements. As you can see, those are the things that I find most important. But for you guys tonight, if you are on the, oh, wrong one, let's see, creating, creating a homepage, I have two links hiding down here on the bottom for you. 
classroom furniture templates and home page slide templates. So your classroom furniture one is, let's see, 139 slides of different furnitures that you might want to make to use your digital classroom with. There's walls, there's shelves, there's bookshelves. So all of these are made in Google Slides. This is my gift to you tonight. But if you're like me and you're really lazy, and I was told to say uh, something about uh, content sharing or something, I, I don't know. Copyright. I, copyright, there you go, thank you, thank you, copyright. Check your copyright laws on some of this. Uh, I didn't create all these, I'm not gonna lie. But all of these are pre-made for you that you can use. And as you can see, you can click on each little thing and you can move it around. I can grab my Bitmojis. So if I want to put my Bitmoji guy in here, like this guy sitting down, let's see, I probably need a different environment, something for him to sit on. Maybe one of these bean bags here. Let me grab him with the glittery pillows. That's definitely me, Adam. Glittery pillows. I was thinking the same thing, actually. You was thinking the same thing. Okay. And then I bring my guy into my Google slide. I can drag, I can make him smaller and make it look like he's sitting right there on that bean bag. Then on this board here, you can come in and you can create your text, write your text on there and then make them hyperlinks. You can make these hyperlinks and just write out what you want. I use word art. Uh, so I go insert and then I do uh, word art, wherever that is on here. There we go. Hey, Lance, Lance, real quick, before you go any further, just so they yeah. kind of see how this is working, click on your uh, click on yourself and click on insert link so they can see if you wanted to make that a link to your teacher page. Kind of show them that real quick. Yep, that, well, that's what I was going to do with the word art. But yeah, so I click on myself right here, and there's two ways you can do it. You can press Control-K, and then it will bring it up so you can put a link in there. So what I would do is I would go to my Canvas course here, and let's say this is my home page, or let's say I don't have a teacher page on this one. Uh, let me go back to my dashboard. And then I'm gonna go to this class. And we'll go down to pages, view all pages, since I messed that one up. Vital homepage, this guy right here. So everything, every page, every assignment, everything that you do in Canvas has a unique URL. So that's the unique URL for this page. So then I would copy this guy and then I would go back to this guy and I would paste that in that link. So you can do it two ways. Again, you can click on what you want to make the hyperlink, control K, or you can click on it and there's a little link right there, insert link and paste that guy in there and press OK. So now when I embed my slides, right there's that guy and they click on that, it takes them out to it. So if I go back to my other course, and again, I know this is where we're gonna lose everybody and everybody's gonna start making their own Bitmoji classrooms now. And I'm a guy, I'm not really into this, but I, I did this for you guys. And we can, we've got people in Global GEG uh, and somebody put in there in Global GEG when somebody's gonna be doing one of these. But if I come in here and I click on modules, when I click on modules, you're going to see that this is going to take me over to the modules page for this course. So if I clicked on grades or I clicked on assignments, it's going to take me to the grades or the assignments for that course. So that's what those hyperlinks do. And like I said, I've got three because I couldn't figure out which one I wanted. And then next week we'll also go over, if you notice, I don't have that little bar down here. Okay. Because I didn't want that bar there. So I said, well, let's figure out how to get rid of it. So I did. All right, uh, I'm gonna throw it back to Adam. And if there's any questions, go ahead and hit those questions for us, Adam, and then go right into working inside of modules for us. Uh, that, I hope that answered that question about can the Bitmoji uh, page have a live link to the syllabus? Yes, it can. As we just showed you kind of with another link, it's the same, everything is, Everything in Canvas has its own unique URL as far as wherever you're at within the course. Let me talk a little bit about different symbols. And some of you have been dealing with this already and probably are aware. But as we go through these assembles and you can look right here, this is the difference between a page, which is here, and an assignment is the pencil. That means that it's edible. They're, it's looking for kids to submit something, to do something as far as that goes. So that's all, the only difference that you or the significant difference between those two. And of course, quizzes or assessments. And this is just a little nugget for you guys getting started. But 
it's been my uh, experience that what we like to do in our Canvas courses is to add a password for our quizzes and for our tests. Obviously, if we want to proctor the test, so kids wouldn't know that password, but the quiz, we would give them the password. So that way, when they hit next, it doesn't automatically open the quiz for them. And then you have to reset it. So it creates a little bit of a, a struggle for the teacher to kind of manage if they don't do it that way. So just a little thought that you guys can think about as you start building your courses. And as you look, you'll see a link. And uh, of course, that goes. Now, um, Lance, am I going to go ahead and show a module here? Is this my turn? Yeah, go ahead, show, go ahead and show them how to work in modules and bring all that. Okay. Up so let me show you. First of all, I'm going to give you a nugget. Before, one more nugget. I'm giving a lot of nuggets now. Lance is giving away stuff, and I'm going to hack. I can't. I got to keep up with him. He's he's got things going. This is new. Uh, if you go into your quizzes in your course, they are let's and you click here. No, I'm sorry, not quizzes. Let's do that again. Let's go to assignments. They Canvas has made an update recently and really happy with it because it's something they've been needing for a day or two. But if you go into assignments and you click edit assignment dates, you now can edit every assignment in one place without having to go back and forth in the assignments after you've created your course, especially when you start copying a course from an old term, a lot easier than it was in the past. And I thank them for that, as all of you will, I'm sure, once you start working with us a little bit more. I was, I was going to share that next week, man. Thanks. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I can't help it. You were giving away nuggets. I didn't know that's the way it worked. All right. So um, anyway, it's something you guys will will think, think us for later on, I'm sure, or at mm -hmm. least Canvas. All right. So let's deal with module creation. Of course, you can do a lot of things with modules. And, and here's the best way for me to explain it. When you're building items in a course, like I, in Google Classroom, if you build it, it kind of, you know, you pub, you know, once it's published, it's out there, the world's seen it. You can put stuff in the shop and kind of work on it. And then all of a sudden, when it's ready for prime time, you can publish it. And that is a great, great feature of Canvas. And so if you'll notice right here, I can, this whole module, this orientation module, I can just unpublish it right there. And so that way nobody will see it until I'm ready for it to be actually seen. And if I really want to get a little bit more to it, we can create gated uh, items for the modules for people to progress. We try to, uh, we try to do that with our orientation. So kids have to watch that. But once we get down to the content, we don't always uh, do that in our, and it's probably a better practice to do it. But all right, so let's deal with just a module creation real quick. So module, we're going to name it sample module and so and you can see we can add prerequisites so we can add that hey complete this test make an 80 on it those kind of things before they can actually experience or see it and of course here's the sample module you can see it's unpublished when it's first created and now we get to the meat of it well it's not any good this is just a chapter or however you want to appear it and it's not any good until we actually do some stuff so if we start creating items uh, we already have some items that I've created in the course. We can just bring those items in, which is always nice. Or we can create a new assignment. Or if you can see how it's kind of got it divided out, we can just different items based upon my group. Back to what Lance said at the beginning, is grade weighting will be very, very important to your course for most of us as far as that goes, unless you're just going to make everything the same and put them in one group. But if I want to create an assignment, I'm just going to do this Add one that I've already got. And uh, as you see, it's created. It's still got the due date of when the assignment was created. I can go in and show you all the settings that Lance showed you earlier, and we can still edit this and make it there. But like, I would rather go back to the assignments and do all the dates at once after I created a syllabus or a pacing guide. Typically, what I will do is create a pacing guide on a spreadsheet that I kind of carry over from time to time. And I know this thing, you guys that have used Canvas know that you can kind of get it to transfer dates from one course if you've used the same course again. I don't find that that's as effective as I would like it to be. And in the end, I still have to go back and kind of edit the date. So I just kind of do it on the front end and deal with it that way. So once we have done a couple items and we can do, we can add anything we want. We can add a new assignment. We can add a page. Uh, oh, yeah, right here. Sorry. Uh, we can add a page, a quiz, a file. So if I add a page, I can add any of the pages that I've already got created. Same thing. Or we can go all the way through this. We can add, 
a discussion topic or a discussion board. And the discussion board, you can set, we'll talk about this down the road, or this will be our next, one of our next sessions probably. But as we deal with discussions, you can create what the criteria for the discussion completion is. Is it one post? Is it two posts? Is it three posts? Those kind of things. And uh, of course, you can see, you can put an external URL. If we wanted it to link out to another page or another course, or maybe even some other tool that you're using that Canvas doesn't support. And it supports a lot that we use within our LTI. But if it doesn't have something that you might use, you can link that out and let the kids go there. But back to what we will say later on, the word pass back will be something you'll want to understand what it is when you start adding items that you want to grade. And of course, external tool, we'll talk about that next week, but you'll see a lot of good stuff here that you'll be able to use. But um, these are all the different items. And the best thing, once you get your module created with your content, with your videos, with whatever you want to do on a page, and you're, you know what? Hey, the car is ready to bring it out of the garage. Let's put the publish button. And when that happens, now the whole world can see it. I could unpublish everything, but the modules kind of gate on myself if I choose. Obviously, that would restrict kids if we did that. So we may or may not want to do that at times. But uh, that is the basic of creating a module. Lance, I think I'll throw it back to you now. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm going to talk about a few things there. A um, couple of things is once you get started, I suggest creating all of your content inside the module view once you get started. OK, we showed you how to make a, an assignment and a page tonight on the assignment tab, on the pages tab, mainly because we want you to know that every, all those things you create uh, is right over in here. And that's how you get to them. But once I get my modules created, so like this is like my chapter right here, I will create everything from this plus button right here. So and when I hit new assignment, don't let this scare you. I'm going to just type in test right here. It's going to throw it right down here and it's like, it didn't do anything. What was that? Well, what you actually have to do is click on this item right here, and then it takes you into where you can start creating. And then you can hit edit, and then you can do all of your edit assignments and all that right there. It looks just the same as it did before, but I'm, I'm this guy that has to keep everything kind of linear and, and in a row. That will help you do that. So pages, assignments, everything, create it in your module view is, is my best uh, advice for you. Now, if you look over here on the left side, you'll see that I have some things that have this eyeball with the line through. What that means is I can see those, but my students can't see those. And as Adam was talking about, there's only certain things that we allow our students to see. So as you can see, these are those things. If you want to change your course navigation, change these things over here that the students can see or the order that you have them in, you do that in the settings. So we're going to click on settings here. This is course navigation. Settings page will come up here. Now, these things here, you can change, but most of these I would not change if I was you because it could mess something up with your sync with your uh, LMS or your SIS. What we're going to look at, though, is under navigation right here. So I'm going to click on navigation. And everything that is above this line or this text right here, the students can see. Everything that's below it, they cannot see. Okay. And there's some text on some of these that, you know, if you don't put it up above that line, that it, it's not active in the class, which is fine, like Nearpod. I don't need it active in this class. So let's say files. I don't want students to see files. I don't think they need to see it. Grade sync. I don't think they need to see that. OK, I really want to keep them focused on my modules page, my announcements page, my grades and my syllabus. Now, some of you will say, well, hey, they can't see quizzes. They can't see assignments. That's OK, as long as you have it so they can see the modules pages and you put those assignments and things on the module pages. That way they have a hyperlink that goes to it. So after you do that, we're going to hit the save button right here. And that's going to change our navigation. So now if I was before where we could see it, but now you cannot. All right, I'm gonna skip over selecting your homepage. We kind of went over that a little bit before, but now I feel like it's really important that we talk about how to view this course as a student. So after we do this, if we hit settings, over to the right, you have student view. That's one place you can see it. Also, if you are on your homepage, you can hit student view right here and see what it looks like for them. So when I click on that, 
You'll see this big pink bar come up here at the bottom. And this is what it looks like as a student. As you can see, now I can only see these things. If I click on modules, it's going to take me into that module view. So this is a content page right here. Notice no pages over here. This is a content page. If I click on that content page, it's still going to take me to that content page. Keep it narrow as to what your students can see because they'll be over here clicking on everything. They can see their grades. They can see their syllabus. They can see all that. Now, if you notice at the bottom, there's a reset student. A lot of you may ask, why is there a reset student on here? Well, that's because you can actually come in as the student and you can take this academic, uh, academic integrity quiz. You can take all these things and see what does it look like for the student to take this quiz? One thing that I will make you aware of, though, is if it's something and we'll, we'll get to this more next week, if it's something that's like Google tied in and they need to like get their Google authentication and all that going for it to work, it won't work because Google actually says, hey, you're not really this person. When you're finished looking at it, you'll hit leave student view right here and it'll actually grade this for you and give you a score in your grade book at, that you can see as a teacher. You'll hit leave student view, press OK, and then it's going to take you back out to this page right here, which is the settings page and the things you were working on before. Okay. All right. The last thing we're going to show you tonight, and I know we're just about out of time. Or we may let, be let, let me add one thing to that, Lance. There, okay. are two, there are two types of student views. There's a regular student view that Lance just showed you, and then there is an act as the user Don't student give view. Don't the advanced stuff for next week. No, and I'm not touching it. I'm just telling you it's coming. You just wait and see. You guys are going to be there. But and one more question. I want to answer one question real quick before you get to that thing. Somebody have one in there that kind of came up. Can you use Google Forms within Google Canvas? Yes, you can. But I want you to understand that because you use the Google Form and of course you can embed it as HTML and all those things, or you can put it as a link. You can do it anyway. We'll show you that uh, down the road. But I will tell you the limitations will be that it is not scored within Canvas. It would be scored within your Google Form. Uh, right. based upon that goes. So just remember that. We'll, like I said, that'll be more of an advanced topic. I don't want to get off topic there on that. Exactly. All right. So last thing before we go to Q&A, let's say we've got, as Adam said, we've got the, got the car ready to roll out of the garage. We're ready for everybody to see the product that we got. We've looked at it in student view. We know that everything is superb and ready to go. You're ready to publish your course. If you click the home button over here, it'll take you to your main screen on the far right side. As long as your screen is not, you know, like collapsed. If your screen is collapsed, this is one thing that I had to learn. What's on the far right side now becomes the bottom. Okay. So that's one thing good to know. Far right side, you've got a publish and unpublish. This course is published right now because this is green. Okay. If I click over here on the gray to unpublish it, when this goes red, this course is unpublished. So if a student's in this course and they go to get to it tonight, they're not going to be able to see it. They won't even be able to see the course card. But you hit this publish button, then they're live and ready to go. So you've got really three places you got to publish. You've got the course you got to publish, which if you don't do that, you can't see anything. Second thing is you got the module you got to publish. If you don't publish that, they can't see any of the assignments underneath it. Third thing is assignments, pages, all those things have got to be published in order for you to do that. All right. So I know we've got Q&A coming up. Uh, Adam and I will do our best to answer any questions that you got. Uh, Dana, uh, if y'all don't care, just shoot us those questions. You or Stacy, and uh, let's see what we can answer. All right, is there a Google form to to Canvas Converter? I have scads of Google Forms. Okay, is there a converter? Not that I know of. Adam, you know of anything? No, I was thinking, is there a way to export that into a Word doc? If there was, then that might be something for our future. <laughs> there, there is. We, we can actually go Google Forms to Google Docs, and then we can bring that in uh, through a couple of different ways. Or you can export those grades as a CSV file, and there is a way to upload grades into Canvas from a CSV file. So uh, if, you, if you just want to stick with Google Forms, which I understand, I will show you next week how I create quizzes uh, inside of Canvas using old PDF files that I got because I didn't want to recreate them because a little lazy, I guess. All right, what else we got? Stacey and Dana, if y'all want to join us too, so y'all can just read them to us or talk, that's fine. I saw one pop up there and then it went away. What are the pros and cons of Canvas 
versus Google Course Builder. Well, number one, Google Course Builder is going away. Uh, it is going to become Google Assignments later on. But Google Assignments, uh, actually, when, when I was in my environment, you saw that I had two Google uh, integrations going on there. One was called Google Apps and one's called Google Assignments. Google Assignments, you can pull straight into that. So if you like creating that content in Google Assignments and then bringing it into Canvas, you can do that. All right. Uh, okay, so, I, I just want to let you know I'm going to stay in the back end because I've got little people running around my house and they're making a lot of noise. I like little people. That's okay. All right. I like them too, but they're kind of loud. So I understand. Hey, and guys, for those of you that are still with us, if, if we've, got, we've gone over time, we know that if you need to leave, that's okay. We're going to continue to record and answer questions for a little while. All right, and, so, and Dana's little people are so smart. They actually ask you very complex questions. It's very cool. <laughs> well, then, then we don't need them on. <laughs> All right. Uh, may you may you email us later. Yes, you feel free to email us. They should be. Yes, they are in the uh, on the last slide. Yes. All right. I embed uh, the code for my syllabus, but it made a tiny square with an arrow, and it won't let me expand it. All right. So. There's two things to that. Um, you're talking about, I've had this happen before, this guy. So you go file, well, I don't have access to this one, publish to the web, and then after you publish it to the web, it's gonna give you an embed code. I prefer not to bring it in that way. Let me see if I've got another document. Go right. back to yours though. It might be a, a percentage thing. It might have their their pixel width might be too low. It, typically, what I would do is change that to 100% under the HTML code where you were earlier. Yeah, uh, I just want to let me get. Oh, that one's that's not one I can put on there either. Sorry, confidential information. Adam can't see that stuff yet. What about I this one? Couldn't see it anyway. <laughs> In, in case you don't understand the back talk, um, uh, Lance is uh, so lucky he's got Adam on his team to get work with him in vital. So we're all excited about that. Yeah, I, and I was kidding, by the way. All right, here's one that I can bring in. So I've got this document here. I'm not for sure exactly what it is, but hey, history, something, something, something. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to go publish to the web. So this is a Google Doc. I'm going to embed, publish. And then from here, I'm going to copy this guy. So what you've got going on here is there's not really any frame size here, right, Adam? No, on. but once you put it in, it'll set one for you. Yeah, and, and I don't, I don't think it's going to set it the way that we're going to want it. So let's go here. Let's go to pages. Somebody was asking, how do we sign up for next week? Will they have the link already posted? We, we, yeah, yeah. Uh, we will get that in the um, Global GG. And Lance and Adam, we can um, maybe just take one more question, then we'll get all this next week when we're um, back again. And um, uh, We're so excited that there's so much interest in this, and Dana and I are just excited because we share – all this learning with our communities and I'm going to put it on because her kids ask such smart questions. She actually asked me, Oh, Ms. are you teaching CS principles or CS discoveries? And I was just like, and how old are you child? So, so, so for see, <laughs> if you see in my code here, it gives the width and the height. Let's see what happens when we bring this in. I change. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Hey. Now, now edit it again and it'll, it'll set it for you. Click on yeah. edit. One. So, so I've had this happen before and generally if you use the Google apps, it won't do that for you. But if you will open this back up now and hit this guy, uh, it didn't give me a hot. It all. didn't, did it? No. So, so what we're going to do, cause I cheat a little bit is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab this guy. Y'all didn't see me do this. I don't have notes that I just keep stored away. People think that I memorize all this stuff. Public <laughs> brain, and we're going to go here. And I think if we do this, let's hit save. And bam, there we go. So what, what I did was I added to the end this width equals and this height equals. That way you can determine how many pixels wide it is and how tall it is. Okay, but if you actually do the embed code, because I've, I've screwed my homepage up now, uh, let me go back and just edit this guy. If I go in and I do the embed code for this or use the Google apps for this instead of using the embed code, it will bring in those things that Adam was talking about. 
So we'll go here, plugins, and I'm going to go Google Apps. This thing is called Home for Canvas. And I'm going to give you guys some homework this week. Go ahead and create a module or two. I have way too much stuff in my Google Drive. And then I'm going to hit embed. When you bring it in this way, what you'll see happen is in the HTML code, it puts it for you. Now, I edited this. I made it 2,000 by something. I don't remember what it was. If you just make 100%, it will always fill the width sideways. 100%? Yep. Do I take off the... Uh, nope, just put a percent right there. Well, oh, good idea. Way, way to show me up there, Adam. HTML, y'all. Right, Dana? Oh, boy. <laughs> there oh, you go. I, just, I just went to an HTML workshop the other day. Oh, it was awesome. We see, Adam, I, I like mine better. Yeah. I didn't fill it up. And y'all see this bar down here at the bottom? I will show you how to remove that next week. But homework that I've got for you guys this week Number one, create some module pages, throw some assignments, throw some quizzes, things in there. Number two, go ahead and design your Bitmoji page inside of uh, Google Slides, and then we'll show you how to bring that in next week. We're also going to talk about quizzes next week, right? Is that oh, next week? Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Let me hit the last couple of slides, girls. I apologize. Next time, next time, Google Cloud Assignments, External Tools, Speed Grader, Embed Features, which you saw a little bit there, Commons, Building Quizzes. I'm Lance. That's Adam. Here's our Twitter, our emails. You can email us between now and then. Thank you, ladies. Yay. And as soon as we nail down a time that uh, Lance and Adam can join us again, uh, Dana and I will be back with more Canvas. Your questions will be asked, answered. <laughs> They'll be asked and answered. Um, and then your homework assignment, I just put that in the chat. I'll show that right now. And looking forward to seeing you guys again. Thank you, Lance and Adam. You've set our chat on fire. It was great. Yes, thank you guys.